Now I'm going to introduce you to my business partner, Richard Hain, who is going to do a little bit more of a speak on Biohaven and how we've used those um, in some projects already the last couple of years. Hi there, I'm Richard. I'm a co-founder of Fog Environmental. We're the EU distributor for Biohaven, which is a type of floating treatment wetland. We launched our first Biohaven in the UK um, a couple of years ago. Since then, we've launched quite a few more, both in England and on the continent. Uh, this is a talk of two halves, really. We're going to be talking about um, uh, what makes Biohaven different to any other floating treatment wetland product out there, and also look at how we've been applying it in the last couple of years. And there's a really wide range of applications. So hopefully after um, Ian's excellent talk this morning, we're all familiar with what a floating treatment wetland is. Uh, some of what they can do, as just noted on the board there. There's a huge amount of peer-reviewed scientific data um, supporting the use of floating treatment wetlands uh, for water quality improvement. We're very actively engaged in the research community because um, we believe that floating treatment wetlands are a great concept and possibly something of an unrealised opportunity as well when it comes to achieving water framework directive aims and managing things on a catchment scale. So what actually makes um, Biohaven different from other offerings out there? I've picked out a few key points. This is an aerial shot of one of the biggest Biohavens launched to date. It's um, 3,000 square metres. It's a nitrate reduction project. It's actually quite a handy advertisement for passing aeroplanes as much as anything else. We can build really big, tough structures with Biohaven that are low maintenance. And it's actually a product which is designed to emulate and bring some of those ecosystem services of what a wetland does uh, out in the wild. Moving on to the design, you can see you've got a very deep, um, internally buoyant <coughs> base there, which is flexible. You can see the guy dragging out the water there. It's a non-woven structure. It's very, very high surface area, which is great for biofilm development. It absorbs wave energy really well as well, which is a really important factor. Now the depth of that structure, you can see, is, is really important as well. Hopefully this shot will show you why. This is one from Mesocosm, which has just been put in the frame there. Uh, you can see how deep the structure of the island is, and that's a really, really important factor for um, just letting it protect that root ball and giving it a really stable base, uh, stable base to grow. So you've also got a, a dry zone which develops on the island, which is a really important factor, having that unsaturated zone that accretes biomass. Yeah, you, see, you see it being hoiked out here. That's a Victor. Um, this is a Mesocosm at um, uh, Le Col de Mine in Nantes, France. You can see how the, the roots there have just worked their way through that structure. And th those roots <coughs> are so important. They're really vital for a lot of the physical water treatment processes that are happening. But they also have play a big um, role in uh, water chemistry as well. So the design of the Biohaven sets the stage for very, very high plant success rate and long-term plant establishment. This is a shot um, taken from behind a Biohaven in Hyde Park on the Serpentine, looking back towards the people there. And this is after one year. Um, so really, really high plant success rate, great establishment there. And these systems are, are designed to be in for a really long time. So actually you need, um, you need a system where you don't be coming back and replacing the plants in a few years' time because you'll lose your root mass, you're losing their efficacy um, with regards to water quality treatment. So the biohaven should get stronger as the roots intertwine through that non-woven base and the system naturalises over time. The structure of biohaven also gives us a lot of versatility in what we can do. We, we can be quite creative with it in terms of creating sweeps and creating curves. And that's obviously going to be quite important in some places where aesthetic considerations are more important. The thick there also gives us versatility. Uh, in our planting and finishing. So we can build up the buoyancy, and we can finish it with gravel, and we can finish it with turf, like you see in this picture here, and we can adjust the buoyancy easily in manufacture. So actually we can make islands that you can walk on. We delivered a project in France last year that could take uh, 10 people jumping up and down on the island. And we know that through experience. We, we tried 12, and that was a bit too many. Um, the last point is not about the technology itself. Um, it's more about our approach to the technology, which is um, really important, I think. We work a lot with the academic community. 
We're very focused on research, and that's something that's very important for us. It's not just so that we can say to our clients and customers, hey, we're really involved in research. It's actually it, it's about us having confidence in what we can do and what we can deliver with this product. So there's a few summary points there of the, of the key differences. Hopefully you can see from that why Biohaven is quite a different offering to um, other floating treatment systems uh, currently available. I'm now going to show you a few examples of how how Biohaven is being applied at various places in the catchment, um, starting with the more straightforward applications. This is where London Wildlife Trust actually get an honourable mention. Uh, this was a redundant bit of water space, just kind of collecting litter before London Wildlife Trust came along and created a series of pocket wetlands using Biohaven in this area. <coughs> They're a year old now, they've established beautifully, um, lots of insects buzzing around them, all the time. <coughs> and I think projects like this are great. There's there so many little redundant bits of water space. We'd really add value by using this product. If you think old canals, old docks, lakes and ponds. Projects like this are really more about habitat and uh, increasing immunity value of an area. And any water quality uh, benefits is kind of more ancillary, and not really quantified. This is a, a floating wildflower meadow that we created for a client last year. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's the first time someone's actually created a floating wildflower meadow anywhere, but hopefully it's not the last time. We went for a maintenance visit a couple of months ago. It's established brilliantly. Uh, that all the bees and everything were, were, were buzzing around it, so it was, it was a real high of activity. I think it's, it, it's an absolutely brilliant project. It, it looks absolutely brilliant. Uh, we didn't I don't know if it was going to work at the time, but, but it did, so yeah. <laughs> it went well. But we can obviously create a whole load of different landscapes uh, and habitats using Biohaven for connecting, uh, connecting a habitat and also just creating new habitat. We've used Biohaven a bit in um, uh, helping developers, local authorities, deliver against planning conditions, conditions of consent. If you think about um, Biohaven as, as a really important tool, potentially, when we've got a new development going on, um, being able to create locally relevant habitat, as well as being able to um, contribute to positive, have a positive impact on water quality, is, is a great benefit as well. So, so it's a very important tool on that front, potentially. Getting into slightly more technical applications now. Uh, we touched on this earlier, uh, Ian did. This is a shoreline project. Um, it's for erosion control. Obviously we can create long sinuous structures using Biohaven and it's very very good at absorbing wave energy. So there's an opportunity to develop um, and deliver a real load of multiple benefits with projects like this. Conserving habitat, uh, creating new habitat and, and, and connecting as well. A lot of erosion control projects are going to be piles and hard solutions and rip wrap, and there's always going to be a place for it, as long as they're engineers that we're going to be wanting to put concrete and steel in the water, essentially. But there are a number of softer solutions now, and using Biohaven is, um, is, is certainly one of them. It's a slightly more left field one. Um, we've created floating allotments using Biohaven. We don't have unlimited land, uh, so why not grow crops on water? Uh, at one end of the scale, we've done testing on, on growing things like saliconia, um, samphire. And at the other end of the scale, we're looking at a floating orchard project as well. We're helping a client specify that. Obviously, apple trees are not renowned for growing very well hydroponically, so they wouldn't actually be growing like that. We'd just be creating a deeper matrix space for those um, apple trees to be supported on. Fish are really drawn to Biohaven because it's a food source um, and it provides protection as well. In fact, fish are an amazing way of actually transitioning uh, energy and nutrients through the different trophic levels. Uh, you have biofilm developing uh, on that root mass. Uh, the, the zooplankton will, will feed on that. The fish feed on the zooplankton. So you're actually transferring energy through the system. And Biohaven can play a real key role there. 
my colleague Leela is going to say a few words on that um, after I've spoken. But it's a very uh, novel and interesting way of trying to remove uh, phosphorus from the system. We've got a really good track record of using Biohaven in industrial wastewater applications as well. Uh, we can form anaerobic basins with it. It's been used to treat landfill leachate. Uh, it's really low energy, which is, which is obviously a, a, a big bit of box ticking for all these industries. And because we can create deeper basins with it, because we've got a floating structure, uh, it also means we can um, have a slightly smaller footprint, more attenuation time, more treatment time. So you could line it up against, say, a conventionally constructed wetland. Um, you could achieve a lot more for less money and reduce maintenance costs as well. Yeah, we have to remember that, that, that actually a floating treatment wetland is a recognised form of constructed wetland. Um, so we can provide significant advantages there. Um, I think achieving better, more consistent treatment is, is one of the big ones. When, when you look at constructed wetlands with gravel, every X years you're dragging out all that gravel uh, and actually the cost of replenishing a, a constructed wetland can be on a par with creating it um, from scratch the first time. And with a system like this, you're literally vacuuming sediment out, removing it away occasionally. You don't even have to take the system offline. So there are some real advantages in that area. Mining is another really interesting application. Uh, whilst we don't have loads of active mining going on in the UK, we, we do have a bit of a legacy issue, which quite a few catchments are having to contend with. And we can, we can use Biohaven to target dissolved metals. Uh, there's a lot of peer-reviewed research around uh, using different plant types to tackle different types of metals. And actually having a high surface area reactive area um, for um, biofilm development and bacteria uh, can play a key role in removing dissolved metals. I think there's definitely a place for biohaven in, in SUD schemes. Again, you've got a floating system, so you're always treating it at, at the same level, at the top of the water. And it's a very, very easy retrofit, something that Ian mentioned earlier. Um, <coughs> And the fact that it floats means that you're providing treatment, you're providing an amenity value there, you're providing habitat, but you're not actually diminishing uh, any of that primary function of that asset, which is ultimately to hold water and hold it back in, in a wet pond. Wastewater, as well, is a, a very important sector, that, and we're working with quite a few different people in the wastewater industry and polishing. Obviously, there's an industry with key drivers around um, reducing their energy, both directly and their embedded energy in chemicals, reducing maintenance, whilst also uh, improving performance in the, in the context of title legislation. And that's quite a difficult thing to square off, I think. So with a floating system, again, we can create a deeper system. We can increase attenuation time, increase treat treatment time, lower the physical footprint, lower the maintenance, so hopefully um, that's, that's an attractive proposition. We are developing propositions with a few different water companies right now. The science is sound. We know these systems can do a huge amount to help reduce nutrients, help remove heavy metals, uh, and reduce costs while improving performance. So um, that's a pretty agreeable combination. So we've just given a, a, given you a whistle-stop tour of a really wide range of applications right there. And, and clearly, treating water to a defined threshold, looking at heavy metals or nutrients, is a very different type of project to um, dropping in a bit of new habitat. Um, we can work with you in a number of different ways to help specify a project, but sometimes the best thing to do if you're thinking about using a floating treatment wetland is just to if you give us a call or give us an email and we can talk through some basic feasibility kind of issues and talk you through those. But design is a key factor. Um, you've got some chemical issues there, you've got some physical issues as well. Um, Ian is much more of an expert in that area, has covered these this morning. One other factor as well, which is also David covered, is establishment time. We're hoping to be able to negate that issue by growing biohaven and being able to send them out pre-established. So we're kind of developing a bio biofilm reactor here, sending it out to site and it's ready to go. So here's a summary. We've got something completely different. It's a novel design. 
and we've got extensive lab and field data showing that it works. It's a very versatile system. We can do so many different things with it, and over the last couple of years, I mean, it's, it's, actually, it's just been amazing. The, the different types of projects have been really satisfying um, from a technical point of view as an environmentalist to be able to deliver real change in some areas. I think generally floating treatment wetlands are a brilliant concept and something of an unrealised opportunity and how they can contribute to um, water framework directive targets and helping us get there in a, in a low carbon way. So that's my talk. Thanks very much.